Hi everyone, Ben Taylor here and welcome to another Tuesday tutorial. Today's video is going to be perfect for people that are starting their journey out into the world of Photoshop, which is both an exciting time and it's also, well, it can be a very frustrating time as well. That's probably because there's so much to learn, right? But today, I'm gonna to be focusing on something that's really important to know in the beginning, and that's how to resize your images in Photoshop without losing any quality. So let's jump right into today's tutorial and get started. So if you're watching this video now, then there's a great chance that you've probably spent a bit of time on Photoshop. And that means that you probably know that Photoshop is an amazing program. If you can think something, then pretty much you can create it in Photoshop. That is, of course, if you know how to use Photoshop. So a lot of people get really excited in the beginning and they dive in and start trying to create all these different designs, which is fun but they don't know what they're doing. So this means that generally you get things wrong and then you get frustrated. Think about it this way. How many times have you bought something that you've had to build, like a piece of furniture or something like that, and you've got the instructions and you've tossed them to the side. You've then built up the cupboard or the drawer unit or whatever it is, and then you've realized that something's back to front or the wrong way around. Photoshop is the exactly same. You need to learn these little things in the beginning, which may seem boring, and then when you've learned them, then you can go on to have fun and build up your design. So what I'm gonna show you today is how to make your images bigger or smaller without losing any image quality. It seems like something that's really simple, and it is, but yet so many people don't do it. Just go on the internet now, type into Google some kind of picture term and you'll see so many images where the quality is pixelated and just looks terrible. This is people which haven't done this process, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, and then it means that they've just ruined their image. So let's jump into today's tutorial and get started. Now it's worth me saying, if you're someone that spent a little bit of time with Photoshop and you already know how to do this, then you can just skip this tutorial if you'd like and you could revisit on Thursday when I bring another tutorial out or probably an even better idea is go and check out some of my Photoshop, Lightroom and photography tutorials on the channel itself. Okay, this is the picture we're going to be working with today. If you want to join along, no problems at all. All you need to do is go onto the description area on YouTube and then simply click on tutorial picture and this will download. So, we're working on resizing our images and keeping the quality the same. Let's first show you how people get this wrong. I'm going to duplicate this picture here. By doing that, all I need to do is press Ctrl J, come over to my Move tool up here, and then just move my duplicated layer to the side. Now I'm going to press Ctrl T, which is the Transform tool. You can see the transform tool has come up because I've got this box around my image. I'm going to press shift and bring down the size of the image and then press tick. This has saved the image this size. Now I've had a change of heart and I think actually I want the image to be bigger again. So I'm going to press control T, hold shift and pull the edge up. If I hit my tick, it will save it as this size. Now I'm going to zoom into the image and look what's happened. You can see that the quality of the image is not as good as it was. It's actually quite pixelated and it doesn't look particularly great now. So if I zoom out, let's just compare this against the other image over here. And you can see by zooming into this image, this is really sharp and in focus. So what happened? What went wrong? Well, first, let's drag this image back here. Well, what went wrong is we didn't convert this into a smart object. Now, it's so easy to do this. When you convert it into a smart object, the image keeps all of its properties the same. So if I just click on this and press delete, let's show you what I mean. 
I'm going to duplicate my layer again by pressing Control J. And then I'm going to drag this over here again. But this time, I'm going to right click on the layer itself and come up to Convert to Smart Object. When I click that and then I resize my image, watch what happens when I make it bigger again. Now last time the quality went really poor but this time if I hit the tick let's zoom in the quality is perfect it's exactly the same as it was originally and all I did was convert this to a smart object so that's how simple it is to keep your images the same quality when you're resizing them there's also another way to do this so before you go anywhere Watch this. This way is probably even easier. All you have to do is click on the folder where your images are. So I'm going to click in here. This is where my image is on my computer. I'm going to drag this into the document. And watch what happens. I know it's a lot bigger, so it's hiding the other two images. But look. It's got this little overturned paper here in the corner, which is the exactly same as the smart object. So if you drag the image into the document and then resize it, what Photoshop does is it tells your image that if you change the size of it like this to not affect any of the properties. So you can do this two ways. You can convert it to a smart object or you can drag and drop in your photo into the document and it will automatically be saved so you can change the size of it without losing quality. How easy was that to do? All you had to do was right click, choose convert to smart object and then you could increase and decrease away without losing any of the quality in the image. Now you can also remember, drag and drop it into the Photoshop document itself, and then you can do it that way as well. So this was a beginner tutorial I know, and it's uh, a lot kind of less in depth than the tutorials I usually make, but I thought it'd be important for me to make something for the beginners that subscribe to this channel, so that they can really follow along with it and then get to learn something about Photoshop. Don't worry guys, I'm still going to be making the tutorials where I'm going more in depth and having more fun with things nothing's changing there so don't worry but if you do want to watch some more beginner tutorials because you're watching this channel you enjoy it but you want to learn more about the processes of Photoshop then leave me a comment down below and I'll definitely consider start making more tutorials like that now thanks for joining me today guys I really appreciate you spending your time doing that if you haven't already and this is your first time hit that subscribe button join us here and then watch more videos every single week Whatever you do today, have an amazing day and I'll see you all again really soon.